Hello and welcome everybody. You know who it is. It's your boy King Demps. I just wanted to do a quick video. Obviously, this report. Um, I don't know why I've got these headphones on. I don't need them at all. Uh, I ain't listening to shit. This report has obviously come out um in the last couple of days, uh, stating that OG are looking to bench Valde and Nico. Obviously, OG have had an underwhelming year thus far started off looking really nice with nexa in the lineup they did very well at the blast premier spring groups everybody was banging nexa himself was going absolutely nuclear on certain maps and in certain games and since then it's pretty much taken a complete nosedive dumped out of katowice and failed to make the major generally have looked pretty underwhelming in doing so and Obviously, there are definitely issues within OG. Now, the solution they seem to have gone for is to make some roster changes, which is understandable to some degree. Um, the lineup outside of Nexa has been together for a decent amount of time now, has definitely had chances to show what it can do. And this is the result. Valder and Nika are on the way out. Now, first things first let's focus on the more interesting of the two which is valda valda is obviously a pretty highly touted player i would say um generally seen as very very solid generally seen as the potential to be a star player in the right team i don't think on og he's ever really lived up to the hype and i think in general valda has not quite reached maybe the heights that we suspect he could however i don't think he's always had the best of luck uh in terms of transfers and teams he actually said in an interview with hltv i'll link that down in the description or somewhere that he's had a couple of interesting moves come up in the past and they haven't quite materialized materialized sorry due to timings i would be very unsurprised if astralis at some point had been interested in Valde, but Astralis are tight as fuck and will not pay buyouts. Uh, wouldn't even pay Farley's probably minuscule buyout buyout from his SPX contract. They basically like waited right uh, until Farley was a free agent or whatever. Anyway, Astralis being tight asses aside. I would be very surprised if this Valder decision is not partially at least mutually agreed. I think I don't like the way I see Nexa call for this team. I think a lot of actually a lot of OG's problems are actually Nexa's calling. Considering the personnel that he has around him. Nexa's calling isn't an issue per se. It's not like he's just a shit in-game leader. I don't think that at all. But I think he does not have a team where the very loose, free-flowing, simplistic style that allows very independent and individualistic star players to kind of build upon it and you know it gives star players a canvas to paint on i don't think that suits the personnel that he has at og and i think nico being removed is probably indicative of that i think nico is one of those players who probably needs more structure needs a little bit more direction from his in-game leader to be effective now I wouldn't be surprised if Valda is not a fan of the way Nexa calls. It's not a very Danish way to play Counter-Strike, let's put it that way. Unless you're Carrigan, obviously. But, you know, if you look at the way, like, Heroic play or the way Astralis play, it's not as loosey-goosey as Nexa seems to like to call. So that's the first thing. The second thing to think about, uh, and we'll have a quick look at this here, is, um, yeah, Valda's been the second best player this year by a decent margin um i know there's only like a small rating difference between him and flame z but flame z has had some like pretty abysmal events and i think flame z's uh stats are a little bit inflated by like the katavitsa play in and blast um he was <clears throat> he was og's best player at blast so yeah makes sense that flame z's stats would be just a smidge inflated um, but obviously we can also see that Nexa, uh, not Nexa, sorry, Nico has been the worst player statistically. And if we go back to 2021, uh, we just need to adjust this so that uh, everybody shows up. 
Nico was also the worst player on OG last year as well. And Valder was also the second best player on OG last year. So I can't see this Valder swap being because Valder's performance has been bad. I think it's got to be something of a clash between the way Nexa wants to play, how Valder thinks the game should be played. I imagine Alexi B is... I mean, Alexi B was during his OG time a bit more involved, a bit more micromanagey is the term that I think is used. And I suspect that mesh is probably a little bit more with the way Valder envisions the game. I think working more in tandem, more as a unit, less individualistically is probably the way Valder wants to play the game, right? This is obviously some speculation, but it's not without, I think, some foundation of sense at the very least. The next thing, obviously, to talk about is is Nico on the way out, and that I think is unsurprising. Nico has kind of just been not good for OG pretty much the whole time he's been on the squad. He's been their worst player. Um, CT side, I don't think he's much of an issue, but he's a woeful T side player, um, or at least has been for most of his time during OG, and particularly during this Nexa iteration of og he is kind of their lurker by and large and he just doesn't get anything done no impact from the lurk role um he's either super passive in his lurks and therefore non-impactful just not doing anything when he does try and be more proactive in his lurks it looks like he doesn't really know what he's doing his timings are off it just just looks super uninspiring on the T side. He he really is just not offering anything particularly on that T side. So seeing Nico go is unsurprising, and um, I'd be surprised. No offense to the guy, if anybody was particularly interested in Nico, um, he'll probably go to a lower tier Danish side. Um, yeah, I can't imagine a, a top team like top twenty team is gonna have any interest uh, in bringing Nico on board. As for Valda, surely there's got to be some interest there. Um, if Astralis weren't so tight, I would say Valda for Zipnix is an absolute no-brainer. Valda has shown the ability to be a great site anchor. Could literally just straight swap for Zipnix and be a humongous upgrade uh, just on the CT side. On the T side, Zipnix is just not really doing anything for Astralis of note or of value, in my personal opinion. Um, and I think, again, even just a straight swap of Valda for Zip on the T side of what Astralis do would just be an upgrade. It's just putting a better player in a not particularly impactful role. Config and uh, Blame F are obviously the big players on both T and CT for Astralis. And then Farley... Plays more of a role on CT for sure um, than T side. He's a bit more of a supportive player on T side. But to summarize this uh, whole kind of discussion and these moves, I don't think this is necessarily going to be particularly a solution for OG. I think their problems are probably a bit deeper and a bit more structural. However, if they can bring in two maybe slightly more independent players, people who fit Nexus calling style a bit more, then for sure I can see this working. Because I think Mantu is is still looking pretty good. I mean, you know, if we go to the 2022 stats, Mantu is actually at a slightly better clip for 2022 than he was over the year of 21. Mantu's biggest problem has always been kind of disappearing in the bigger games, but, you know, that is not something that is necessarily related to his, like, ability as a player. I think he's a pretty good orper. I think he has the potential to be, like, a really strong star orper if he can get a little bit more consistent. Flames E is a banger player. He's he's great. Flames is an amazing player. I don't know whether it's Flames or Flames E there, but I'm going to go Flames E just because it's caps. Um, he's an absolute banger, amazing entry player young as well uh, only gonna get better in my opinion i really really rate flamesy and i think he has i mean look his rating is still pretty good for the year but he has suffered hugely um from nexus t side calling like if we have a look um his opening stats he takes like all their attempts and like it, it's an okay rating here but if you go 
uh, and look event by event like the last couple um like i say those stats again are just super inflated by the absolutely monstrous blast stats and the fact that 27 maps is not a huge uh, sample size and a good portion of those maps were actually at the blast premiere when they played well so like really skewing the stats i think og's problems uh Either they need to bring in uh, some personnel who fit the style better, so this could end up being a solution. I kind of suspect it might still not be the fix, to be honest. I think Flamesy needs a bit more structure and a bit more setting up. Uh, I think Valda was a good player, and I think they're going to struggle to get anybody as good as Valda, but they should be able to get an upgrade on Nico. Um, as for where Nico and Valda will go, I've said a little bit previously, I don't think Nico is going to end up on a decent team. As for Valda, I think I would be surprised if there's not interest. I think there's international rosters that definitely should or could be sniffing around. Um, and could he go to Heroic? Probably not. I don't, I don't necessarily think he would not be good on Heroic. I just think... I can't see Heroic making a change, really. Like, who do you swap out? The obvious one, probably, for Heroic is Shush. Um, but even then, I think Shush is a good player. Based on this year, I might even swap Tess if I'm Heroic. I think Tess is really taken... Is the guy who's underwhelmed me the most in recent times, whereas there were points when Heroic were at their best, where Tess looked like a fucking monster. He was alongside Starvin as that, like, monstrous carry force, and he's not been that player for a while i think so but i don't see heroic making a move and i wouldn't necessarily say heroic should make a move um i think heroic's problems are a little bit to do with mentality and and being like inexperienced and they they kind of just tend to flop at like a key game a key game they just disappear and go missing and don't play at all to their to their level um astralis would be the obvious move for valda i think like i say um him for zip would be just a no-brainer it makes a lot of sense outside of that who are we looking at he's not going to go to phase phase are not going to make any changes fanatic is maybe an option fanatic are going to revamp the roster and actually if fanatic stick with alex and mezzi add valda to that i think you're cooking with some gas there on fanatic honestly um outside of that let's let's uh hang on let's get the let's get the ranking up I'm, I'm blanking on other teams uh g2 probably won't make a swap i don't think even if they do badly at this major um yeah and then you're struggling obviously nip is not is not not an option i would say like obviously nip have shown and i'm sure valda maybe could learn swedish you know um so like that's not like outrageous to think Vitality is an interesting one. Valda for Masuta. Hmm. That is one I'd like to see. I Masuta's having a pretty good major at the moment, but I, I, I think Masuta has sucked largely for Vitality. I don't think he's been good enough. That is a really interesting move, actually, and one I, I wouldn't mind seeing. Uh, I can't see him going to Copenhagen Flames. Uh yeah, I can't see that happening. And then outside of that, yeah, like I say, Fnatic is probably the one I could see happening. I don't really see much else. I don't really see anywhere else for Valda to go. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Just a little discussion video, commenting on the news, giving my thoughts and opinions. You know the drill. I haven't done closes on my videos recently, but yeah, like, favorite, comment, subscribe, buy the merch that I don't sell. Only joking. As in only joking, I, like I literally don't sell merch. You can't buy any. Don't ask. Oh yeah, my closer that I used to do was if you didn't like it. If you didn't like it, you know, I don't know, f fuck off. <laughs>